Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I've Never Told You, production of iHeartRadio. Samantha. Yes. Why do we cry? That is a good question. That's actually what I asked you last week. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and here is a Monday mini about it. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, look, I just had a day. I want everybody to know I'm okay, but sometimes I need to cry. <laughs> yeah, I got like a 7.30 p.m. work email message saying we need to talk about crying. <laughs> it's true because I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and I think this was the next day. So it took me a whole like day and a half to mm-hmm. get it together to be like, we need to talk about this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I'm a big proponent of me search. So yes. here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So yeah, we're talking about the science of crying and some some cultural stuff, uh, general overview things. Um, so as a human being listening to this, you probably know vaguely at least the answer to why do we cry. It's usually in response to sadness or frustration, stress, exhaustion, and yes, even joy. Emotional tears have higher levels of stress hormones like cortisol. So there are three types of tears that scientists have isolated. And yes, there's tear science. Um, yes. But in emotional tears, uh, they have this these higher hormone levels. And they suspect because of that, it's a way of lowering your stress levels and improving your mood. Right. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of crying. But last week was kind of a rough one for me. Uh, I don't know if it was the book that we read, which had a lot of emotional turns. Um, So if you need to read something that gives you all the feels and to let it all out, whiskeys and ribbons, there you go, Mm -hmm. Um, which we will be talking about soon. Will we talk about before that or (laughs) when's that going to be released? uh, Publication schedules are messy. I think think that's soon. Yes. Okay. We've either talked about it or we'll be talking about it soon. So, um, but also there was this dog story that I read and then there was just the overall sadness of Twitterverse, which I got caught up in. But man, Oof. I definitely felt it deep inside, uh, which resulted in a day of just crying, <laughs> mm-hmm. which then led to why am I still struggling with the feeling that this is me being weak, which I really, you know, it's just the whole conversation that we've had. I know there's been episodes done on it, especially when we've talked about when we get angry and cry, we feel weak in that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it definitely had one of those moments of like, uh, what is this? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's a whole thing to untangle is I also struggle with that feeling like, oh, this is weakness. I shouldn't cry. I should be stoic. Right. And we're going to talk a, a bit more about that in a minute. But I do think that has to do, at least in part, with uh, traditional stereotypical gender roles wherein men don't cry, girls do cry, you want to be more like men. Um, So there is that. But crying can be really good for you. On top of stress relief, crying can also bring us closer to people. It can help us be more creative. It can help us move forward. A study out of the University of Florida found that after crying, almost 90% of respondents felt better. And this, I didn't know about this, but I loved it. Apparently, there are crying events and clubs in Japan where at some of them, for instance, they watch tearjerkers and cry together. I'm guessing Titanic's on the top of that. <laughs> I don't you know. Think? Did you cry at Titanic? I haven't oh, seen I Titanic. I'm assuming it's sad. I'll never let go, Jack. And she did. And she did. Oh, um, terrible. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely <laughs> did that for myself. Look at me. I'm I'm with the Japanese here. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say after that, I did feel a lot of relief um, as if some of my anxiety and helplessness exited my body through my tears. So that was a nice little moment for sure. Yeah, I find that crying really cathartic. And I am someone who my friends sort of look at, uh, give me a side eye, shall we say, because I do enjoy it. And they make jokes about it. And one of them is... So I love angst. Uh, I love it. I love it. And there's a running joke among a group of my friends that have been known me for so long. They call me Wampa. So W-H-O-M-P-A. Uh, like the ice creature from The Empire Strikes Back. So it's a pun on Womp, which is a, a term frequently used in fan fiction. And of course, Star Wars, 
one of the loves of my life. Um, and if I look back, I don't know why I'm thinking about all my fictional crushes a lot lately. I guess I have some time on my hands. Uh, <laughs> they all have kind of this angsty past. Um, so I definitely can relate to thinking, you know what? Today, I need a good cry. I've got my episodes of TV shows and my books or my movies that I know will get me there. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and this whole thing made me think of Inside Out, which th talk about a movie that gets me to cry. Um, and the moral of that story, at least the way I interpret it, is by crying, it's a signal to other people that care about you to help you. Um, and and after you do that, then you can experience joy or these other things. And I feel like that's essentially what I love about angst. And I like the simplified, the simplification of this person is hurt, let's comfort them, because I have a lot of trouble asking for help. So in a story like that, which Inside Out isn't really that, but a lot of the fan fiction I read and write is, this person is hurt, let's comfort them, that's it. That's it. Right. Uh, honestly, movies like this and Up, which I still oh. haven't finished, are dangerous oh. for me. I kind of sit in the emotions too long. Bambi haunted me forever. It haunted a lot of us, I think. It's wrong. It's wrong. I mean, no, honestly, I think that as well as Land Before Time. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was ugly crying on mm. that nonsense. And yes. look, I love a good ugly cry. And you mm -hmm. know, when we talk about ugly cry, we're talking about snot. We're talking yeah. about the faces that just inexplicably looks like you makes you look like a monster a little bit, like you're making mm -hmm. monster faces. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think we see it enough on TV, which we should. We should. That's yeah. the realistic of like tragedy is when we get into that whole level of like no holding back yeah. of crying, that ugliness that uh, translates later to that puffy red face for the next mm -hmm. entire day so it lasts <laughs> the yeah. memories of that cry last for you i definitely haven't seen it portrayed enough and it should be honestly so i wasn't aware of this sort of phenomenon i mean we all know what that is but i didn't know ugly cry was a thing until back when i was the video producer on this show we did an episode on ugly crying and the example that was given a lot was uh claire from homeland Claire from Homeland and then um, Claire Danes from My So-Called Life. Yes. So this, interestingly, is one of the main examples people gave of saying why they don't like to cry is not that it doesn't feel good, but they are self-conscious about how they look when they do, right. which I think is very sad um, that we can't let go of that even in the like throes of emotion. I mean, she definitely gets all up in that emotion. So did you watch My So-Called Life? Have we talked about this? No. I'm talking teenage angst up the wazoo. I don't understand oh. how you've not seen this between Jared Leto's bad boy persona, but he's just misunderstood as well as the <laughs> best friend who has like a drug addiction a little bit. And then you have... Uh, the LGBTQ character, I believe Latinx character, who's going through all of the turmoil of their life as well. Like you just have all of the angst of teenage life in one show. So between mm. puberty, between emo guys, between drug addiction, between uh, LGBTQ issues. I mean, that should have been right up your alley, honestly. It might be. It Who may knows? have been out of your generation. It's probably my teenage generation, to be fair. You're probably too young for that. You should go back and watch some of those things. I wonder I wonder what your thoughts would be because it is okay. the epitome of angst. I do like a very specific type of angst, which I could oh, go yeah. into, but it would take more time than we have. <laughs> but yeah, today. definitely Claire Danes. Claire Danes is kind of the character known as the ugly crier. As well as if you... I don't know if you've ever watched New Girl. They talk about Justin Long's character mm. and being the ugliest crier that they've ever seen. Mm. But it's like comedic level of crying, like he's over the top. But it's yeah. it's interesting too. Yeah, I I guess that's a good segue into gender differences. And like, as we already mentioned, it is more acceptable in this our Western 
uh, civilization for women to cry. Uh, I was thinking of the quote, there's no crying in baseball, and then the song, Big Girls Don't Cry. And that's sort of translating into be more masculine because that is better. Crying is weak. <laughs> for some reason, this whole thing, it made me remember, uh, I used to go to Bible school when I was in middle school, and they, uh, the people who ran it, they were trying to get us to memorize Bible verses. So it was a game of tag. When you got tagged, you, you went into prison and you couldn't get out until you recited a Bible verse to the person uh, who was running the jail. And all of us, literally all of us just memorized Jesus wept, <laughs> which is the shortest Bible verse. And so we would just like barely be in the the fake prison, be like, Jesus wept and run back out. <laughs> they were so annoyed with us. They were so annoyed with us. I was going to say, then Jesus wept because you cheated. Uh, no, they didn't specify. That's you manipulated. Nope. <laughs> nope. I bet you that ch- the rule changed. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. <laughs> but then you can do the another verse of like, pray without ceasing. <laughs> that was a, yeah, they would just have to have a rule of like not it has to be it has at least to this be four length. words. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we're talking about the benefits, according to one article from Medical News Today, it is estimated women cry on average 3.5 times a month as where men cry 1.5, which is an interesting number. I wonder how they got that. I would imagine it was self-reported. I have to say in my experience in my family, like very insular, my family, and maybe some of my close friends, I feel when women cry, it's usually sadness or stress. Whereas most Mm. of the men in my life, it's been anger. Mm -hmm. Um, Crying out, like getting so angry. Uh, Except for my dad. He would cry at literally everything. Um, He was a very sentimental guy. (laughs) I was going to say, my family, they're more, they cry when they're sentimental. So when they think mm. on memories and past, that's when they cry. They don't typically get angry and cry. I feel like I do that. Women, uh, the female in our family would do that more. But when it gets sentimental, talking about the old days, they're talking about past memories of loved ones gone, religion too, like all of that will make them cry. There are a few reasons as to why people cry, but the majority of the time it is due to emotional reasons again, uh, which do have these higher levels of stress hormones in the tears. And then there are benefits to crying and with everything that is happening, it's nice to hear about the benefits. And some of those are, it actually is a self-soothing benefit that helps you relax and regulate your emotions. So that's good. Yeah, and it can help relieve pain. Uh, Crying releases oxytocin and endorphins, which help to soothe pain and can also enhance your mood and also can release toxins, which can, once again, release stress. Crying can also help you physically. Tears can fight off bacteria with fluid called lysozyme and also improve our vision by making sure the mucous membrane doesn't dry out. So those are the two other reasons outside of emotional tears. Those are the two other types of tears. Frequent crying can be a sign of depression. There's a crying proneness scale. So there is something to look at and which goes into a lot of other things, that level of helplessness and continued feeling of dread or disappointment. So definitely something to watch for. Constantly crying, yes, a sign. So be aware of that. Yes, absolutely. But if you just need a good cry, let it's it out. Okay. Yes, it's okay. And... We we want to be here for you in whatever way we can to help bring maybe some joy or some clarity or our sadness, you know, but we want to do the best things for our audience. So if you would like to email us for things that you want to hear or don't want to hear, what you want more of, whatever. I love that people are sending what they're streaming. Uh, I love it. Um, You can do that. You can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com or you can find us on Instagram at stuffmomnevertoldyou or on Twitter at momstuffpodcast. Thanks as always to our super producers, Andrew Howard and JJ Posway. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I've Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 